Welcome back everybody! Today we're doing one of my favorite things to make and that is seafood gumbo. Now there's other recipes out there again but I'm gonna go ahead and share it on my page because once I learned how to do this it's really neat. The base for this sauce comes from a roux, obviously a Cajun dish, Louisiana. Uh, now when you're down there in New Orleans and stuff it's usually called seafood gumbo. Uh, you can put anything you want to in this. It's one of those dishes where a traditional Cajun family households, if you got mussels, if you got fish, if you got shrimp, uh, sausage, it can be any kind of sausage. It can be anandouli, it can be uh, kielbasa, it can be smoked sausage. Today I'm actually using smoked sausage. And I'm not gonna try to make this a long drawn out deal. My pizza video took me about four hours and I, I mean, it was a nightmare. I, that video had hours and hours in editing and I had 60 or 70 clips to, it was it was too long. So I'm gonna keep this real simple and fast and just try to show you the ingredients. Hopefully I'll put it in the description, the recipe, and you can follow along. This is a real neat dish. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make a roux and be a poet. So I'm gonna put a cup of flour and some oil in the pan. You can use butter, you don't wanna use regular butter. You can use clarified butter instead of oil, but I just use regular vegetable oil and a cup of flour. And you gotta stir that around for a good 20, 25 minutes till it gets dark in color. Chocolate roux is what they call it. That's where that natural flavor in that gumbo comes from, where that, where that color comes from. So let's get going on a roux. It takes a long time, but good 20 to 25 minutes, and you can't walk away. You gotta stir this thing. Stand there and stir it for 20, 25 minutes. And at the same time the roux's going, we're gonna start some chicken thighs and, and, and fry those in some Cajun in, and I'm gonna caramelize my sausage a little bit. Now, you don't have to caramelize the sausage. You can throw it straight in there and it'll cook in the gumbo, but I just like to have a little bit of that black caramelization on my sausage. It's just so much better to me. So I caramelize mine and heat it up and cook it a little bit and then throw it in. And then I deglaze the pan and take all of that wonderful flavor and pour it into the gumbo too. I deglaze it with, uh, chicken broth. Let's get going on the roux. I'm trying to hurry up. A cup of flour and enough oil to kind of make that into a, a, a soupy, pasty mix there. I don't even know what it is. Whatever it takes. Now, I'm just using all-purpose flour today. You want to put a cup of that in there. That's not quite a cup. Let me get a little bit more. All right, there we go. A cup of all-purpose flour. Now to that, you're going to want to add enough oil to just make it kind of pasty. And I don't know what the measurement on that is, whatever it takes, I gotta put the camera down and get it figured out. Let me stir that up and show you what it looks like. Okay, this is our roux. It should look something about like that. It's not an exact science, people. Put a cup of flour in there and some oil until you can stir it around. And that'll turn dark chocolatey brown. It takes about 20, 25 minutes. You want to have it on medium, medium low heat. Do not walk away. Now, it's time to get my chicken thighs going. I'm going to get them going in this pan over here and fry those up and fry up my sausage. Now I'm guessing that's about a pound of chicken. Again, it doesn't matter. You can use anything. You could use uh, chicken breasts. You could use uh, chicken legs, wings, take the meat off of it, whatever you got. Get some meat in there. Put a little Cajun seasoning on there. All right, we got the chicken going, Cajun seasoning. We're making the roux. I'll check back in with you in about 25 minutes when the roux is done, and then we'll, I'll show you what's next. Do not walk away from that roux. I'm telling you, it will mess up. Just stir it and make sure you stand right by it. You can't leave that thing unattended. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is get some rice going. I just made about a cup and a half. I like to serve my gumbo over rice. It's nice to have in there. Now, I just make this rice with water. I don't use uh, chicken stock or anything. I don't really think you need to. I kind of like just a nice fluffy white rice and then all the flavor of the gumbo and everything mixes in. 
it's just fine. I don't, for some reason, I just feel like using chicken stock for this rice is too much. Now, in the future, I probably will post my wonderful jambalaya recipe that I came up with, and I do use stock on that rice. And something else, uh, do not let this roux burn you. It will burn, it is scalding hot oil, I mean hot, hot. So when you're stirring it around and sloshing it all around, just be gentle with it, don't let it splash on you, it will burn. All right, just an update here. I got my chicken browned. I'm gonna shred that up into small pieces that can fit on a spoon. And I got my sausage in here and all that chicken grease frying and adding a little of the seasoning in there. The roux is, I don't know, 10 minutes or so in and it's starting to get a little brown, but it's gonna have to get a lot more color in it than that. So we're still stirring the roux. I got all the seasonings out over here and we'll go through that in a minute and I'll tell you what seasonings to add, but everything's going just fine. I'm going to keep on cooking along here. All right, there's all my meat. I got the chicken cut up. I may have over caramelized that a little bit, but that's okay. That'll be delicious in there. That's that good smoky gumbo flavoring. And uh, this is our roux looking, uh, going to see how our roux looks now. This is how our roux is looking now. It's still getting color. So keep that stirring, keep it going. And I'm gonna deglaze this pan a little bit with some chicken broth and I'm gonna save that in a bowl because I still got another 10 or 15 minutes at least of this roux cooking. So let's deglaze that pan. There we go. And I just save that there. So there's all of our chicken drippings and flavoring. All right, I deglazed the pan and I'm gonna save that. That's just what I've been doing lately uh, because I, I'm not ready to dump that into my roux yet. So I just go ahead and deglaze the pan and I save the drippings there. And I pour it in later when we add all the ingredients. All right, everything's going along fine. I'm gonna keep on stirring this roux. It takes a long time. That's the worst part about this. It's so easy to do, but that darn roux takes a long time. You gotta stand there with it and hold its hand for half an hour until it turns chocolate colored. So keep stirring the roux and I'll be back with you shortly. Cheers, nice fella. We're about ready. Let me show you that roux. It is pretty much there. You could go with that about any time. I'm gonna give it another couple minutes here and then we'll move on to the next step. Now, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to give me a subscribe now and share it with your friends. If you got a Facebook cooking group or something, go ahead and share it on in there. Uh, I, need your, I need your support and I appreciate it. We got everything on this channel. We got chainsaws, we got gumbo, we got tree felling, we got firewood. I, I do a little bit of everything. I got car maintenance. So main thing I do is firewood, but you gotta eat right if you're gonna go out and, and spend a bunch of energy cutting trees down. So enjoy the recipes and I, I really hope you enjoy the videos. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there and I appreciate the support. All right, these are all the spices you're gonna add in to the gumbo. Some salt and pepper, ground sage, thyme, thyme, oregano, smoked paprika, garlic, onion powder. Now I'm using minced onions today because that's what my store had. So a garlic powder is, or onion powder is fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and use these minced onions. It's the same thing, just a little bit a little bit bigger particle size there. A few bay leaves, cayenne pepper, and some hot sauce. And you can write all that down. I might put it in the description. And you're gonna wanna put a good dollop of that stuff in there, a good couple teaspoons. I mean, don't just go sprinkling a little bit in. I go ahead and pull the top off and pour some in there. You want a nice couple teaspoons, a nice little pile of seasoning in there. 
And the only other thing you're gonna wanna do, you're a purist, you gotta add the gumbo filet. So put some gumbo filet in there, which is sassafras leaves. I'm gonna have to dig mine out. I'm running a little bit low, but uh, so you wanna put some filet in there. If you don't have any of this stuff, it still comes out really good. The main thing is the roux you make, that gives it the, the flavor, the good base. Um, but it's not an exact science. Like I said, in Louisiana, they put whatever they got in the refrigerator in there. So you could put all kinds of meat, seafood, whatever you want in here, and it'll probably be really good. The other thing that a lot of purists are going to want to argue about or whatever is okra. Now you could put okra in your gumbo if you want to. Like I said, you can put whatever you want. This is just a nice recipe to make at home. This is how I do it. Um, I'm not claiming to be some uh, Cajun guru, wizard, uh, you know, technical chef here. Uh, the, if, if, if you want to come region, argue regional uh, ingredients, you can, but I'm aware uh, you need the filet and you can put okra. The, the traditional thing that gumbo is in Louisiana homes, though, is whatever you have in the refrigerator. So if, if you don't have okra, that's fine. And, and I'm not a big okra eater myself, so I don't even use it. It's really good with just chicken, shrimp, sausage, and, and all the peppers and onions and everything. It's just fine. So if you don't have okra, don't worry about it. Now, here's our roux. We're pretty much ready to go. I mean, you can see what that looks like. She's looking, that's about right. So that's how your roux looks. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and add some, add the rest of the ingredients. I, I'm pretty good with that. That's looking pretty good right about in there. All right, the roux is ready. And now this is where things are gonna start moving fast. You're gonna to wanna to add some uh, green pepper cut up. I just cut it up small enough to fit on a spoon. Whatever size you want, it doesn't matter. And your onions and some garlic here in a minute. And we're gonna stir that into the roux. And that gets this stuff cooking and going. Just stir that right in there. Put your onions in there. Now you can cut your onions whatever size you like. I just kind of did mine in medium dice and that's fine. I, I don't really think you want to make them too small. It's just onion. If you like onion, it doesn't really matter. Turn the light on so you can see that. Now, like I was saying, if you like onion, the size of the onion isn't really the end of the world. You just don't want it too big so it can fit on the spoon. And I could have done them. It doesn't matter. Put some onions in there, some, some, some peppers. I usually use red peppers too. I don't have them today, so I'm not using them. But you can see that hot roux is gonna kind of get those onions and everything caramelizing. Just stir that in like that. Stir that up for a minute and then we're going to add some garlic right before we put our chicken broth in. Now I'm using reduced sodium because they were out of the no salt added. So I got, I got the reduced sodium so at least it's reduced on me. Depending on uh, how the levels look, I might need a second container because it just depends on how much broth I have after I add all this ingredients. I might need more than one container so I, I might come back in with some unsalted and add in there too. But just keep stirring that up. Now you're just gonna wanna kinda stir that in there for a few minutes. Basically about the same amount of time it would take to kinda caramelize some onions or get them looking a little translucent, however you wanna say it. So stir that in there, let those onions get cooking for a minute and then we'll go ahead and add the rest of our meat and our chicken broth and our seasonings. The roux is about done cooking the vegetables. I'm gonna throw a little garlic in there right before we get going. Okay, we gotta move fast now, but that's been cooking long enough to get those onions going. Don't wanna burn the garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and put my meat in, that way I know how much how much broth to put in to cover it all up. 
So throw our meat in there. Well, you know what, buddy? I should have probably done that the other way and added the broth before I put the meat. That way that flour can uh, spread out, but it'll be fine this way too. Let's add our broth in here now and cover that stuff up. I got that meat just kind of sitting on top of all that flour, so I'll, I'll get it down in there and kind of break it up. It'll, it'll break up just fine. It's all going to have the same stuff all over it. And uh, here's our uh, deglaze, our little drippings from deglaze in the pan. We'll throw that in there. Now that flour will help to reduce all this. You can see right now, it's pretty, it's pretty liquidy. The consistency is not great. But that flour will help to thicken that up, and then we'll, you can also reduce it as you cook it for a while there. It'll reduce down a little bit, so it'll get thicker as it goes. It's already getting thicker. As that flour cooks into there, it'll, it'll thicken up. So let's add our seasonings in here now. And you got quite an array of seasonings to, to add in there. Just go ahead and spice it up real good. That's what I do. I spice it up real good. First thing, I kind of like to put that smoked paprika in there. This is pretty important for this recipe. Pour some smoked paprika in there. And a little oregano. Running low on that. Actually, I might have a new one. And here's some, some thyme. And some sage. Now you can see I'm putting a pretty good amount in there. I just gotta make a nice little pile. I don't just sprinkle a little bit in there. But let me go ahead and uh, break that up and stir that in a little bit there. And we got our garlic powder, a little more garlic. And I got some, this is supposed to be onion powder, but I'm using the minced onion. We'll throw a little bit of that in there. And our bay leaves, throw two or three bay leaves in there. Oh yeah. Now, I like some cayenne pepper, it's gumbo. I like it a little spicy, so throw some cayenne pepper in there and I can handle the heat, so I put a pretty good amount of that in there. And then some salt and pepper. I'll taste that here in a little bit and make sure I got enough salt in it. And then of course, you can't have a Louisiana gumbo without some hot sauce. Now I love Tabasco, we'll put some Tabasco in there. And why not make a little blend? A little Louisiana hot sauce probably wouldn't hurt either. We'll put a little bit of that in there. And it does smell like a gumbo, it's smelling good. All right, okay. So there's our gumbo now. And we're going to let that cook, I don't know, for 20, 30 minutes. Kind of let everything cook. Let those flavors come together a little bit there. That's pretty much it. So there she is. I'm going to put a lid on that pot and let it cook for 20, 30 minutes. And then I'll come back in with my seafood. I'm going to be adding some shrimp. And it's already... Uh, peeled and deveined raw shrimp and it just needs a few minutes to cook so if you were adding fish or shrimp or scallops or something like that i'd put it in the last five ten minutes 
and just enough to cook that fish because the fish doesn't take long little chunks of fish that'll cook right up in there that's what we're going to do we're going to put a lid on that give it a half an hour or so then come back in add your seafood cook it another 10 minutes and you're ready to serve that stuff over some rice and it is some good stuff you're going to love it and don't forget your gumbo filet you want to put some of that in there all right now good buddies it's been about 20 minutes or so and uh, so here's our gumbo now and the texture has come along real nice i don't know if you can see but it's gotten thicker and it's kind of hard to tell on the camera but it's it's got some nice thickness to it it's not too runny it'll be good that's the rice comes in handy too you pour it over some rice and it kind of soaks down into that rice it's it's just fine so there's our gumbo I'm gonna go ahead and add the shrimp in here now. And I'm just gonna give this shrimp about 10 minutes to cook. So pour that right in there. As soon as these shrimp are done, you're ready to eat your gumbo. The gumbo has cooked, the shrimp is done cooking, and I'm gonna make a little bowl of this. Now, what I do is I just put a little bit of rice in the bottom of the bowl, and I'm not real hungry right now, so I'm not gonna make a big bowl. But there's our rice in the bowl. And then you just serve your gumbo over the rice. There it is. Now, I don't eat the bay leaves. I like to leave those in the leave the bay leaves in the pot to season. That's all it takes. There's our gumbo. Thank you so much for watching. I'll try to write the recipe down in the description, but it's all in the video. If you watch the video, you'll know what it is anyways. See y'all next time. Have a good day.